We are live. It's Workshop Wednesday. And you have Jana, Jana's Angels here today talking about safety. We're so glad that you joined us every that you join us every week on Workshop Wednesdays. Today is a very, very important Workshop Wednesday because we are talking about the most important thing when it comes to anything you do in life, and that is safety. Your life is worth so much. And we want to make sure whether you're staging, showing property, staging a short-term rental, going to a short-term rental, or whatever you're doing that you are safe in what you're doing, especially this time of year. We're going to talk through that. We also have a free resource that Jill has put together for everyone. So stay tuned for what that is going to be and how you reach it. So welcome, ladies, to today's Workshop Wednesday. Hello. So excited to be on. Woohoo! We have Jennifer. So let's go around and just introduce ourselves for those who are joining us today who maybe haven't joined us before. My name is Lori Graham. I am the VP of Operations for the Home Staging and Redesign Alliance. The Home Staging and Redesign Alliance exists to build businesses and what? Cleaners. I think you said that backwards. We build, no, we build, yes. Yes, that's right. We do that every morning in our morning alignment. We say what we do just to remind ourselves that amongst everything else that we're doing, our core value is that we build businesses and we build leaders. So I'm here to host for today, but I have my support team, the people that keep me going every day. So Jill, introduce yourself to anyone who may not have already met you. Yes, I am Jill Johnson. I am the digital coordinator for HSRA. So that basically means anything digital I am in charge of. So membership, um, our, our member training center, all of our websites, all of that fun stuff. But I'm also here for some member care if you need any. Um, but yeah, that's what I do. You're the digital queen. Yeah, I am. Yes, you are. All right, <laughs> Jennifer. Go ahead and introduce yourself while our, our followers are joining us today. Hey, everybody. So my name is Jennifer Gaynor. I am the staging business advisor here with HSRA. So I am here to help make sure that you are getting the most value possible out of your membership with the Home Staging and Redesign Alliance, um, making sure that you are connected to the right modules and training that you know where you can access everything and just to know what you have at your fingertips and if nothing else to just be a listening ear for you whenever you're going through a rough patch uh checking in on you and making sure that everything is going amazing with your business and that you are growing what do you mean jennifer business owners have rough patches i know right it's not all just like sunshine and roses it's like every oh. once in a while you just need somebody to to you know Somebody that's been in there, you know, so having been in Model My Home for a couple of years, kind of knowing the ins and outs of going through in the pandemic and then just serving under Jana is amazing. I've learned so much from her. So definitely wanting to impart some of that wisdom to our members as well. So good. Yes, that is. And she is not here today because she's finally getting some R&R &R after yes. hosting the biggest event in home staging and real estate combined this year. It was mm -hmm. the largest event, the best event. I love other people who have these events. We love going to other people's events, but ours happened to be the largest and it was incredible. Following that event, she led a team at Model My Home to stage nine short-term rentals in one week. And now this is the third week and she's finally taking a break. So we're taking over. We're going to talk about safety and how to make sure that you are safe in everything that you do. And so what better time of year than the holiday season when we tend to have lots of gifts and things in our car, or at least people think we have lots of gifts and things in our car. So we might not actually have them, but they might think we do. So um, let's go ahead and jump right in today and talk about 
just safety 101 going to a property for whatever the reason is that you're going through the property so you could be showing the property for real estate checking a short-term rental out and or staging so what are the fundamentals the basics of being safe when you go to a property i can take that one i can take a couple tips um the first thing i want to say is how important having your safety procedures and plans are um, ahead of time. You don't want to wait until something bad happens for you to have to figure out that safety plan. Um, so a lot of the time that can get your safety plan can get looked over. So just make sure that that is something that you have um, that you have written down somewhere and that you share with your new stagers coming in, your new team coming in. Um, but one thing and I did take some notes beforehand. Um, one thing that is very important, um, and this comes from one of our modules that we have, as, if you're a member, you get access to all of our modules, um, but it was talking about don't park your car in the driveway because somebody could park their car behind you and block you in. So that's something that I've never thought about, and I am definitely one that when I was doing staging, I would park my car in the driveway. Um, and but now knowing that somebody literally could block you in, that's that's a big deal. Um, also, making sure that you aren't going somewhere by yourself. I know that that's very 101, but we are talking the fundamentals 101. Um, make sure that you're not going somewhere by yourself. And if you are, you've got somebody on the phone or you've called the office to let them know where you are um, and to lock the door behind you as soon as you get in the house. Um, I do have a little story. Back when I was staging, I, uh, I we would the stagers would drive their own cars to the property and then logistics would show up a little bit later. Um, but I remember getting to a property and it was in a pretty sketchy area. It was, it was definitely an uncomfortable, Jana talks about getting the, the hairs on your neck that kind of pop up, that kind of thing. Um, but I was like, you know what? I'm good. The Lord's got me. I'll be okay. I, <laughs> I was a yellow belt in karate when I was a kid. I can do this. Um, but I remember walking in and I locked the door. I had my phone on me and everything. And I just had this weird feeling that there was something or somebody in there. And so I start to walk around and I'm checking the windows and checking the doors and the back door, it was a sliding glass door. The back door was literally open. It wasn't locked or anything. So I don't know what happened in that property. That was a long time ago, but just always making sure that you, that's why you don't go in there by yourself. That's why you don't go in there without calling the office and letting them know that you're there. Um, and if you, you have, I immediately left. I immediately got in my car and I called the guys and I was like, where are you? <laughs> this is terrifying, but everything was fine. But just make sure that people know where you are in case something does happen. So those are my few tips I have for right now. Fun stories. While yeah. Jennifer's sharing, if you have a story like that, put it in the comments because we want to know. Yes. Okay, Jennifer, how about some fundamentals when it comes to safety? Love it. Love it. Um, yeah, definitely share your, your <laughs> stories with us, the, the things that you guys have been through. But, um, I think the biggest thing that I took away from, um, just the conversation that we had, we were actually in a clubhouse room prior to this. So if you're not on clubhouse, you definitely want to make sure that you're jumping in on clubhouse because we make amazing connections over on that app. But, um, we were chatting through and we were talking about going somewhere during the day, right? So this was like one of the major things that stood out to me. And the gentleman that was chatting with us kind of echoed what I had said was that nothing good usually happens after dark. <laughs> um, especially if you are in vacant, empty houses, you're doing something in the realm of real estate. When people know there's a sign in the front yard, that's basically like a sign that says, nobody's home, right? I mean, come and do whatever you want to do. So a vacant property in, is not a place that you want to be alone at night, okay? So getting your work done during the day, whether it is a short-term rental, whether it is a vacant property, or 
just your own house, right? Having that awareness when you're walking in or walking around these properties in the evening, if you have to do so, but strongly advising everybody to focus on getting the work done during daylight hours. We were talking about how obviously we're in the season where the daylight hours are a little bit shorter, so it might shorten your work day just a little bit, but that is super important. And then just your level of awareness, right? And I know, Lori, you mentioned this in our clubhouse chat too, but just being more aware and taking extra precautions to not be in our phones, like not be in your own head, right? Sometimes you're just kind of going through the motions and you're carrying on and you're thinking about your grocery list or you're thinking about the laundry that you have to do when you get home. So being focused and present in the moment and aware of your surroundings, aware of what's happening around you and just kind of being ready at any given moment to tackle something that you might not be expecting. So, I mean, we're talking a lot kind of about the situational awareness and these types of things. And I know that we're going to deal, uh, dig in a little bit more into um, like actual safety steps and, you know, equipment, things like that. But just awareness, I think. Yes, absolutely. Aware, being aware is so important right now. And one of the things that is a very on time right now situation, depending on where you live, but me here in California, um, the I'm not in this county, but the county of Los Angeles has required that their uh, county workers, so your firemen, your police officers, all of that. I know I've seen some some information on the news as well, but as of right now. 120 LA County firefighters are suspended because of their choice not to get vaccinated. And so regardless of that whole situation, let's just look at the bigger picture here. There's 120 less first responders going out. So to somebody who has a criminal mindset, on top of the fact that masks are now still mandated in LA County, depending on what your area is like, they're masked, there's less protection on the streets, and we as business owners, just people in general, are like this all the time. We're not looking to the left and to the right. We're not aware of our surroundings. On top of that, it is the holiday season, and so crimes always rise during the holiday season. So this is a very timely message for everyone. Even if you just stumbled across this and you're not even in staging or real estate, it's just very timely to be aware. And to also encourage all my women and guys out there to take some type of self-defense class, even if it was when you're in elementary school and you're a yellow belt in karate. Jill, next time I see you, you're gonna show me some of those moves. Because I've been, I've really been thinking about taking kickboxing, like just in general. And I feel like, you know, just having that extra source, what are you carrying on you? Texas, you can, you can carry. Um, I, I don't know if you can open carry, but you can carry um, in Texas. You can get your license to, to even conceal. Um, and so what, how are you protecting yourself as a person being aware, not in your phone? Do you have mace? Do you have, um, one time somebody gave me as a stocking stuffer, a whistle that's, it's almost like a bear whistle or whatever. It's like, if someone's chasing you or whatever, you like, you know, sound it off and it's ridiculous and it's super loud. Um, do you have someone from your team, which I used to do back in the olden days before we had FaceTime, I would always have someone on the phone with me if I was showing a property to someone I didn't know or build a relationship to. Or in the winter months, like legitimately by 430, it's already getting dark here. So, mm -hmm. you know, office hours are usually till five or six. So um, I would have somebody on the phone, but now you can actually FaceTime an office person um, maybe it's your your spouse or something like that, because anybody who may, you know, try to do something that's sketchy, the fact that they're already being videoed, they don't know, you know, if it's alive, who it is, 
And that's just added layers of security during this time of year and protecting. As business owners, you should never expect your stager or um, interior designer to go out to a property by themselves, um, unless it's an established client that they've been working with, unless they know. And so now we can kind of dig into the safety protocols that you take in just the day-to-day um, situations. Like Jill said, don't park in the driveway, which to me, side note, squirrel over here, I never park in anybody's driveway ever. I don't know why people think they could just park in somebody's driveway, but right. like, how do you know like their spouse isn't going to come home? I know this is a vacant home and everything. Yeah. How do they know like somebody who lives there is not going to need that driveway? Like you should always park on the street unless told otherwise, or it's a circular driveway so you can get out. That's right. Yes. That the house that I normally park in the driveway of, it was, they were always vacant properties. Yeah. So that's <laughs> such a smart thing. The only other thing I could say, if you had to park in the driveway, try to back into the driveway so that you can just ram them if they're right. here behind you. Right. Yeah. And so um, just to those things and what type of training do you have right now in place in your office? If you don't, you need to do it this month. You need to do it this week or next week. Safety protocol training, retraining. Just like every year, there's certain trainings that need to be done in offices. Why not retrain your staff now for those protocols? I know during COVID, when there was some um, civil unrest, several of our staging companies had to make a plan for safety, a plan of action, so that if they're in somewhere that's having a... Um, some civil unrest or a riot or whatever, they need to know, do they leave the truck? Do they stay in the truck? Do they just push the gas and drive through it? What do they do? Like, And one of our staging companies actually had to have this um, conversation. And their thing was that they obviously would just get out of the truck, leave the truck. The guys, she made the, the guys on the team actually sign that they would protect the women if need be. Like they would not just get out the truck and start running, yeah. but it, that if there was a team member that was a female or whatever, that they would actually make sure that the whole team, regardless of male or female, would make sure that the whole team's together. You know, you're just not yeah. like, peace out. Yeah. <laughs> See you later. I'm out of here. And it's a very real thing. So my mm -hmm. recommendations to everyone who's watching, review, review your safety protocols for your business. Go over it with your team. And download the free resource that we have. Jill, where can they find that? HSRresources.com. Did you know we have tons of free resources for you that help build your business and even more when you become a member. So yes. awesome. Okay, well, let's talk about some, um, I guess, normal things that happen in the day-to-day -day business when it comes to staging, STR, or real estate safety things that we can go over. Who wants to go first? And I have an extra little tip. I know uh, when I was staging, I would typically, um, I would put my phone down and my keys wherever I wanted to. I learned later on that it was best to put it, put all of your personal belongings in the pantry and keep your phone on you. So that's just a little, a little extra thing that y'all could probably do. But um, I do want to add to the, to the training thing. Um, I know, I can't remember if it was Kim Dombrowski or Mary Scally, one of their teams, they actually did a, um, they went out and they did an actual uh, training thing. I can't remember what it was, um, but with their whole team to learn how to actually fight if something happened. And I even think, I don't know if this is a little too extreme, but I, I even think that maybe making that a mandatory thing as stagers come on, you have to have some sort of training of sorts to know how to defend yourself and others. Um, I don't know how that would go, go about, but I do think that that is such a very important thing. And like Lori said, in Texas, you can get your LTC. If you can't get your LTC, you can have mace on you, just something with you that's not just your own self um is is very much preferred so yeah no tips 
Yep. yep. So good, Jill. So good. And when you're going into a property, I think we could start there. Sorry, Jennifer. Um, whether for one of the big things is, is you never have people go behind you. You're yeah. always letting people in first. Mm -hmm. So maybe you're meeting, uh, the selling agent at the property to give them, do a consultation or whatever that might be. You're going to let them go first to show you the property. And sometimes they might want to be, say it's a guy and he wants to be a gentleman and be like, Oh, ladies first. It's very much okay. Just to say, Nope, go ahead and lead the way I'll follow you. And then that way they're in front of you. So whatever happens and then making sure that that door is secure behind you. And we've always um, in real estate, when I did real estate, I always would go to a property and I would lock the door behind me, but I would be very aware of the next exit because you want to clear the property. Mm -hmm. um, I do this in hotel rooms as well Is I want, I mean, obviously there's usually only one exit in hotel room, but I need to make sure that the hotel room or the place I'm at is completely vacant of another person. And so making sure that that happens when you're walking property as well, even if it's an occupied unit, but the owner's not there because who knows what could pop up or scare you or whatever, something unexpected. I mean, doing property management for like seven years, I walked into many surprises when you think that people aren't supposed to be there. And so making sure that you do that, that you're protected when you go in and you kind of clear the house before you start doing whatever it is that you need to do. So go ahead, Jennifer, mm -hmm. tell us your tips. Um, so are we still talking property safety or are we going into more actual setting up units for we, I think we've got the safety of, and I think we've stressed enough just being protect, you know, being protective of yourself and your surroundings. So let's go into the actual tangible things that you do as a stager, real estate agent, or short-term rental host. All right. Awesome. Well, I am wanting to look at it more from the short-term rental host right now, because I know that this is such a huge topic of discussion right? There are so many people that are jumping into short-term rentals. If you are not already doing that, definitely you need to be on board with us because we are connecting with so many people that are just absolutely killing it in the short-term rental arena. So thinking from the standpoint of the host, right? So Model My Home has our own book of business. We have to set these units up and we want to make sure that they're all safe, right? So some of the conversation that we've been having is what are you thinking? You're looking at the outside of the unit, right? Um, you're thinking about the person that's arriving. Where are they going to go? Where's their lockbox? How are they? We're getting apartments and we're setting them up as temporary housing. So being able to have a quick and easy way for your guests to access not just their unit that they're renting, but the actual apartment building. Or do you already have everything set? So as soon as they get there, they know what to do. So they don't have, because it makes me think about one like primary tip of safety is else because somebody that might be watching is going to be looking for people that don't know where they're going especially for us as women so you don't want your guests to be walking into this building wondering what they're doing you want them to be able to walk with confidence go where they need to go get their items check themselves get in their building or whatever so being able to think about it from the very first moment of your guests arrival to fire extinguishers? Are you making sure that they have access to first aid kits? Um, I love what one gentleman said on our uh, clubhouse app, uh, clubhouse today. He was talking about that they actually leave little miniature flashlights in the nightstands, right? To help their guests because 
This is somebody that's sleeping in a bedroom that they've never slept in before. They're probably going to get up in the middle of the night at some point and they're going to be stumbling all over the room. So you provide them with these little flashlights and that helps keep them from tripping and having an accident. So it's all these extra little things that you think about as you're setting up your unit, wanting to make sure that your guests have an amazing experience, but you're prepared, right? The old Boy Scout motto <laughs> to be prepared. Um, you plan for every possible scenario and you provide your guests with all of the necessary things that they might use. Hoping they're probably not going to have to use the fire extinguisher. Hopefully they don't have to touch your first aid kit or whatever, but at least those items are there and they're available. And it'll be something that helps to set you apart from somebody else that literally just throws furniture and stuff into a house and sticks it on a listing site and says, here comes stick. actually spend the night in one of your units, right? Um, and actually be there all night long and listen to what's happening around you and experience that. So being able to kind of put yourself in the shoes of your guest is going to do a lot to help you it from the safety standpoint and be able to see where you might have some holes. that were not so great. And then you're gonna be able to learn from them so that you don't have to learn and make the same mistakes and learn the hard way. You can learn the easy way because they're gonna be able to fill you in on where you might have some gaps. That is so good. So good, such good reminders and information when you're thinking about all things, just safety and what's going on in your business. And so, I'll kind of take the real realtor side of it just because I'm not actively staging properties anymore. And Jill, you can probably think of some things that uh, protocols for stagers, which you've already kind of shared some. But when you're thinking about real estate and you're a real estate agent, a lot of times, it, depending on if you're the, you know, if you're the selling agent, well, you're going to get an opportunity to interview the sellers. Right. So, you know, they want to sell their house. But then when you're a buyer's agent, a lot of times you're just getting leads of buyers, depending on the brokerage that you're a part of. And you might not have ever met these people or you could be in the shoes on the other side where you're doing an open house and people are just freely walking in. And so are you collecting their names and information? How are you know, how will you know who's been in the home? Here in Los Angeles, there used to, there was, I think it was last year or the year before, a huge um, ring of individuals who were targeting celebrity houses. And so they would come to these open houses, all dressed up, probably stolen, stolen stuff from another house that they robbed, right? But completely in suits and everything. And they were, it was a huge like criminal ring. And the way that they were tar targeting these celebrities is they were going to their open houses for the properties that they were selling. And then they would come back later because they'd scope out the property. They'd come back later and then they would rob them or whatever. And why I would assume that celebrities would take everything out and have it staged by a professional staging company so that anything that's in there is actually the staging companies and it's insured, but you know, whatever. So it was on the news. It was this huge thing. Um, and so how are you tracking who's coming to the property that you're responsible for, right? If, if you're the listing agent, the buyers, you know, are you taking them in your vehicle to the places? Are you meeting them at the properties? I know that the house next door to me, we were having a conversation with uh, someone earlier today that was talking about this hot, hot market going on. And I was like, oh, really? Well, the house next to me has been for sale for like three months and it's only two years old. It's beautiful, but it's not staged, by the way. And I have called all my stager friends and said, hey, here's the address. Go get this property staged because I know the house that we live in, uh, we actually rent, but the person bought it off of the way that the house is staged, like 
obviously I staged to live, but you know, like, because of this is what we do. Right. And so I'm like, okay, but this house has been sitting for three months now. So I have heard, like, I have a window here and I have had it open and I've heard agents meet buyers they've never saw before. Right. And they're like, oh, hey, I'm so and so nice to meet you. Well, this is their first time. They just want to sell the property. But do they know who they're meeting? What kind of tracking information do they have? And so we talked about letting them, you know, the that nobody ever walking behind you. You're always the last. So, you know, you what that what does that look like if you're showing a property? Well, you open the door, you say, come on in, let them in first, then you go behind them, you're next to the front door, and then you can progress. Like, okay, go ahead and move into, let's move into the kitchen. Then they move into the kitchen. Okay, well, go, you guys go ahead and go upstairs, I'll follow you, um, or, you know, like, just let me know if you guys have any questions. But always be aware, especially when you haven't built up that infinity with your clients or you're built up the relationships. If it's a brand new person, that's super important. Always, always, always have mace with you, regardless if, it, if your state allows you to carry or not. I don't care what the situation is. It's just going to help you in general. Um, and then also being aware of the property is really important, too. I've definitely been to properties that have back houses or a lot of land. Like You need to be aware of what's on the property, especially if it's a back house situation. Maybe somebody rents a shed. Or if there's ever going to be anybody on the property that's supposed to be there, but you don't know because then that's a safety issue as well for them and for you. And so, and then obviously letting your office know where you're going and who you're going with. Um, and if you ever just have that gut feeling that something's not right, then just leave. It's better to address the situation later than to regret being in the situation in the first place. There's no amount of money that's worth your life. And so from a realtor perspective, those are the things that are top of mind that we've been trained on, um, obviously taking some type of self-defense class and um, also lights. Never show a house with no lights on. Like every light in the house comes on for multiple purposes, right? Not just the fact that it's safety, hello, but that you are going into every room, making sure it's lit well because, you know, there's closets, there's hidden places, places that are kind of shaded or whatever in a house. And you just want to make sure that everything's seen. And especially if the home is staged, you want to make sure every light is on even before that person gets there. So you're getting there before your client. You're going in, making sure that the house looks as beautiful as possible. The, the windows are open which is a good thing as well, because if something does happen in there, the blinds aren't closed, the windows aren't shut. So if somebody was to walk by and see something, making sure everything's open, lights are on, and it's showcased in the best possible way um, is important as well. So I think those are my top ones. What about you, Jilly, for staging? Yeah, I think I covered a lot of them, but um, probably bringing it back to the very core um, very core thing for stagers is in your agreements. I'm sure that all of our members already have this in place, but for those of you that are new stagers, um, and maybe this hasn't been a thought of yours, um, in your agreements, they must sign off that nobody will be in the property and that nobody's going to come by the property. They're not going to send people to the property. Um, they have to sign off on that and having a fee if that does happen. Um, and I know that we always run into situations where sometimes that agreement, it they look over it and they don't really care for it and people will show up. At that moment, you get the logistics guy or you get stagers, whoever, um, to come say, hey, you can come back later. We are not allowing anybody in this property while we are staging that as part of our agreement. And being so strict with that, I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's the owner, if it's the whatever, if it's the agent, nobody is allowed in that property while it's being staged. So that can completely, um, completely X out any possibility of somebody coming in, uh, not completely, but. I, that will definitely gear them off from coming in. Another thing would be to have a sign out in the front yard, a big sign, big, nice sign that says we are staging. Don't come in. 
um, just all of those multiple times where they're hearing or they're seeing that you can't come in. So that's bringing it back to the office. If at that point um, they are not complying and they're not leaving, you call the office, you call the police if it gets to that point. Um, but that is so vital, especially as new stagers, having those agreements and contracts set in stone and in place and you don't veer off from them. Because who knows, you could have a, that same client could have another property they need staged and they'll think it's okay to do that same thing again. So that's a, that's my last little tip. Well, since I'm such a visionary, right? So great case in point, Jill, you mentioned, even if it's the owner, right? If it's the owner of the property or the seller, whoever um, came to your staging company with the contract, the person that signed the contract, even that person, and this is a great example. When you stage a property, you have certain um, processes that the logistics team does. They know that they they place each room's um, furniture and accessories in a certain way, right? Mm -hmm. So there could be accessories all over the ground, right? Tubs, everything. We tend to put accessories on, you know, the the countertops or whatever. But there's a certain process now. Envision Mr. Seller or selling agent coming in and looking and, you know, we love our clients, but they're being nosy. They want to give their two cents, but they turn around and they trip over something and they've gotten hurt. Now they don't want to pay for the stage, but you, the business owner, you have all these employees that have been working on this unit. You have the logistics. Well, you have the stagers that pulled. You have the logistics team, you have the driver of the truck, you have the gas that goes into the truck, the time that you paid them, you have the stagers meeting you there. You have all of these different things going on at one time. And in order to do the job correctly and as efficiently as possible, efficiently as possible, nobody, you cannot add anything into this process. And so they hired you to do something Therefore, let them do it. And I remember having conversations at Model My Home when I was in office with people that wanted to be every step of our way. They've, we have had people who want to come to our warehouse to choose the furniture that is going into their house. We have had people that said, you can't place anything unless I'm standing there. Like, I don't trust you. You don't trust a company who's been around for 20 years who is insured to come out and do this, like there's so many obstacles when it comes to it. But the bottom line, besides the fact that it stops up your team, slow down, slows down productivity, is that we cannot do an efficient job if somebody else is, it's like stopping up our process. It's like a detour. It takes us longer. And so it's actually costing us money. So therefore, if it is something that you're insisting on doing, you're going to have to pay us to replace that time that we're losing because you're distracting us. Also, neighbors love to come over when you're staging. They just do. And I'm not going to lie. Like when we first moved to our neighborhood, I wanted to go see the model homes because I wanted to see how they stage them and get ideas. And they would not let me go, one, because it was COVID, but two, because I wasn't a qualified buyer. I'm like, I live here. Hello, I am a qualified buyer. Like, what if I want to buy one of these units? And so um, they wouldn't let me in, which was a little bit sad. But I do know neighbors always come over. They always want to poke around, see what's going on. And they cannot come while you're staging. And so, Jill, I love the idea of a yard sign. And with something catchy and fun like uh, come back for the big reveal or something like that, you know, and it builds excitement, but mm -hmm. no, they can't come in. So awesome. Did you have anything else to add, Jill? No, I think that was it. Well, I think we've covered all of it today. We're talking about being, you know, aware of where you're going, getting off that phone when you're walking from one place to another, but having the phone handy just in case. Making sure you're you're protected in the home, not letting any distractions happen. Get you some mace if you don't, and I um, definitely do your safety protocol training before the end of the year or right at the beginning of the year. Create a process or a procedure for onboarding new people. Maybe it's something that you film 
you record whatever that is, make that part of your onboarding process. Make sure that your whole team is aware of what to do in case X, Y, Z happens, what, how to keep the team safe. Um, and then make sure that you're thinking ahead and planning ahead when you're um, investing in short-term rentals or styling them. And yeah. so these are the types of things that we're doing at HSRA. We have over 300 total modules in HSRA. And in case you're like me, when I first started here, I was like, Jenna, what the heck is a module? Like, I did not know five years ago what a module was. And then she's like, it's like a training video, like a business training video. I'm like, oh, that makes so much sense. So if you're like me and on just, you know, a different level, um, yes, we have over 300 specific training videos for your business. This isn't um, we do have designations that teach you how to stage, um, which one we posted on social media today. However, if you're in the home staging business, if you have a business or you're thinking of starting it and, but you don't have a degree in how to run a business, that's essentially what HSRA does. We are what trains and coaches you on how to run the inside of the four walls of your business. So Definitely check us out, myhsra.com. We're here every Wednesday with a different topic or an expert interview to make sure that you're continuing to grow for yourself and for your business. So we will be back next week. Thank you. See you next Bye. week.